Okay, so if we look at a fluid that's passing through a pipe, and I'm going to draw an ugly picture of a pipe because I. So that's the end of the pipe, and here's the length of our pipe. But this pipe narrows, or maybe it has lots of tiny little holes in the end, but I think it's easier to see if our pipe narrows, kind of like a syringe narrows to the needle. And so then. Here's our little end right there. That's not a very pretty end, but there it is. So this pipe has a cross-sectional area. So like a um, water hose, if you look at the end of the water hose at home, okay, there's an area, pi r squared for the water hose. If you were to look at the water fountain where the water comes shooting out of the water fountain, you would look at it. There's a little tiny pipe in there that the water is flowing through. It has a cross-sectional area. So that would be like the pi r squared for the end of the pipe, the cross-sectional area. And I'm going to call that A1. A1. Then down here, this one right here, it's a smaller cross-sectional area. I'm going to call it A2. So it has narrowed. Now, if our fluid is non-compressible, so we cannot squish it together, pardon me, any closer than they already are, then the volume... So let's take a little chunk of this fluid and follow it through. So this little chunk of fluid has a length of, that's an L1. Um, if I write an L like this, it looks like a 1. So usually we write it in italics or cursive. So L1, and then, because you can't see it, it's behind the pipe, right? Here's the other part. And that volume of fluid that volume of fluid right there moves through the pipe until it gets to this narrow end. And the same volume has to move through this narrow section as was moving through here because we can't have a traffic jam of water molecules back here where it's narrowing. We can't compress them. Okay? It has to stay the same, so the volume is forced into this smaller section, narrower section. So we have a longer length, right, but a smaller cross-sectional area. So far, so good. So the idea behind this is that the volume per time in one section of the pipe is equal to the volume per time in the second section of the pipe. This is called uh, the law of continuity. I think that's how to spell continuity. Anyway, whatever, good enough. Continuity, it comes from what? Continuous? Continue? If something is continuous, <laughs> continuous, then you expect it to be the same, right? Uh, discontinuities versus continuities in math class, right? So um, we expect it to be the same. So that means the same volume per time flows through any portion of the pipe. So the same volume per time through this portion, the same volume per time. Tell me about the water that's flowing through that those little holes in the shower compared to the big part of the pipe. What happens to the speed? It increases. So in order to get the same volume through that narrow section, the water or the fluid has to move faster. And that's how we get um, pressure washers and we can use the end of the, the water hose, put the little... Uh, what do you do with the water hose when you don't have the little nozzle? Put what, your you put your thumb over it. What do you do by putting your thumb over the end of the pipe? You're making a smaller hole. You're changing the cross-sectional area. Isn't that cool? There's physics behind why you do that. Wow. Okay. So, now if volume is... How can I find the volume of this bit of fluid right here. If I have the, the length of this little bit of fluid was L1 and this is A1, how can we find volume? Any ideas? Area times length? 